guys. Thank you. Uh, thanks, PJ, for that wonderful introduction. Although I think um, it, it might have sounded too corporate that I said, you know, I might look a little bit more. But thank you for this opportunity. I've always wanted to uh, speak in front of TED Talk. And you know, this is just such a wonderful thing to be able to talk about something that is really close to my heart, which is uh, artificial intelligence. So I'm going to go ahead and just give, you know, um, a brief introduction into artificial intelligence. But what's more important is that we will um, try to talk about um, if there's an ethical use of artificial intelligence. Um, so, so like what PJ said, you know, um, I've been in the industry for, for over 17 years, um, but you know, this is just the love of what we want to do um, is to help people understand better artificial intelligence. And, and the reason for this is because we've seen a lot of it, AI, being represented in media and publications, but most importantly, in television, where people may, have, may try to get their sense of what AI is. So just to demystify artificial intelligence, first and foremost, right? Um, at the end of my presentation or my talk, you know, I just want us to be able to answer, can AI be used ethically? Okay, and for, in order to understand that, we need to go and understand what AI is first, right? So let's start with understanding what ethics is. Ethics is just referring to the organizational structure. It also has to determine what is right and wrong. And everybody has that uh, moral compass that it can use to say, you know, what I'm doing is right, by helping people or what I'm doing is wrong by hurting other people. Okay. Um, now, if we're talking about artificial intelligence, there are four major categories of artificial intelligence, right? So there's going to be machine learning, deep learning, NLP or natural language processing, and computer vision. So just to educate uh, and, and let you guys know a little bit more about this, uh, machine learning is the ability of statistical models to develop the capabilities to uh, improve their performance over time without the need to follow pre-programmed instructions. Most of the time, computers can only follow code. If you tell them to do, if they go left, they only go left. If you tell them to go right, they only go right. If you introduce artificial intelligence and the concept of machine learning, they'll be able to decide on their own what the best way moving forward is. The next is deep learning, which is just a, another, uh, a level up from machine learning. Um, and this one, uh, deep learning can be used to recognize image and speech and involve neural networks with many layers of abstract variables. So it can actually make complex decisions. And then natural language processing, this is um, a little bit more popular nowadays if you use Siri or Alexa, or uh, Google, uh, the, the Google Assistant. These are NLPs. Uh, these are technology that powers voice-based interfaces or virtual assistants or chatbots. And then computer vision is a technology that extracts uh, meaning and intent out of visual elements, whether it's characters, uh, let's say documents, and, and categories, right? So I'm talking all about uh, the types of major uh, categories of AI, but let's move forward as to how they're used in the real world. So, like I said, you have Siri, you have Spotify, who provides you your uh, recommended playlists based on your historical data of the music that you've listened to. Uh, you can pre-program Netflix to create recommendations. I'm pretty sure maybe all, more than half, if not no. Everyone uh, in this uh, this room right now has watched The Social Dilemma, um, and even going into financial credit cards or financial institutions, they use artificial intelligence to determine, hey, how much credit line should I give this person based on spending, based on your real world activities, right? And just to make sure, um, I have nothing against The Social Dilemma. I think it's a wonderful documentary. Uh, it gets it right when it says, you know, that AI and predictive analysis, um, sorry, uh, AI and predictive analysis is being widely used, right? But it's not just limited to social media as it is portrayed in the movie, in the documentary, right? 
AI predictive analysis is used everywhere. Okay. Um, I just feel that the documentary left out the fact that the tech companies can align their business models to use AI and data for good. Now, if you've, um, and I, I must apologize, I, might, I must reference to um, a movie that is more of my age, so it's a little bit more age appropriate to my generation, but you want to understand and you want to apply ethics in AI because you don't want to involve, you don't want to end up like this guy. Okay, so for, for everybody in the audience, I'm not sure if you know if, if you recognize this person, but if you can recognize him, is it okay if I ask you to just give me a quick check? Uh, just type it in really quickly in the in the chat box. All right, very good. Uh, Ms. Pamela Robles, the Terminator, very good. So in the movie itself, you know, Skynet is based out of artificial intelligence and basically ends the world. Right, and we'd love to be able to use artificial intelligence in, in a better way and not in a world ending scenario, right? So <clears throat> where do we need to begin or where can it be used, right? Or why is it important for us to be able to involve ethics in AI? There's, there's four major areas where um, AI is used right now. Number one, data security and technology. Number two, risk management and compliance. Number three, people, you know, people, skills, and organization models, and just training. And last but not the least, number four, in public policy, legal, and you know, regulatory frameworks. Now, we need to understand that in these four areas, AI plays a very important part because at one point or another, it has a trickle-down effect that might not be immediately realized or cannot be immediately seen, but it does have an effect somewhere down the line, right? So everybody uses Facebook. And oddly enough, probably by now, if you've used Facebook for the last, I don't know, five years, if you try searching something, if you use Google or, or any other search engine, uh, Microsoft Bing, Google, or uh, uh, Apple Safari, if you try to search something, let's say you're going to search for What's a good thing to search for? Face masks. You'll notice that suddenly when you go into Lazada or Shopee or even your Facebook, when you're just browsing through your wall feed, you start seeing commercials or advertisements for face masks, right? So it's very important that you have that we understand how AI is used. Okay, so how do we make that change and how do we affect AI? We need to start at the top. We need to be able to clearly communicate our intentions of why we're using AI and what the AI, what the data is going to be used for. Okay. Referencing back to the social dilemma, you've seen that they use the reference, they use the data points of each of the uh, protagonists to be able to determine, okay, how do we get him to elicit a response from him? And that's why it needs to be very clear when you are getting involved in artificial intelligence because you're not there to guide the machine to tell it this is right, this is wrong. The machine will try to make the best decision to move forward. Number three, we need to assess the risks. Number four, we need to give examples. And number five, this is the most important, putting up the guardrails. Now, when we say putting up the guardrails, this is where organizations, you know, they should be able to proactively establish uh, the guardrails or those rules to guide, monitor, and assess how AI is used by their organization, their employees, their vendors, and their potential customers. Okay, uh, these, you know, these are more akin to internal controls. Uh, let's say, for example, an example of a guardrail is a, is a framework uh, that allows uh, an AI solution that prevents specific uh, actions from being completed. So let's say, for example, um, driverless cars in the United States, they have uh, a code, they, their AI tells them that if they're about to hit somebody that they need to stop before they actually hit that object, whether it's another car or whether it's another person. Okay, so we need to be able to build these guardrails into, uh, the artificial intelligence that we're going to use. 
So who's going to be responsible for building these? One, you know, we'll start at everyone. We'll start CEO, CCO, CROs, and CFOs. So chief executive officer, the compliance officer, risk officers, and financial officers, politicians, regulatory agencies, policy making bodies. But basically everybody needs to be involved in putting ethics in AI. Why? Because the last thing that we want to do is for people to start using AI for just purely financial gains. And that's what we want to avoid. Um, AI can be used wonderfully. I mean, Facebook, Google, uh, Apple, all of them can use AI wonderfully, right? But the main challenge that we want to avoid is using the data and selling the data without thinking of what the repercussions are because of financial gain. So remember when they say that, you know, uh, uh, it, it's not money is the root of all evil, right? They say that the money, the love of money is the root of all evil. So remember, we need to be kind and we need, you know, money can be used really wisely, but don't just have that love for money. Because if you start just thinking of money and the greed comes in, that's when it skews up the ethics that you can possibly put into artificial intelligence. And lastly, you know, just to, just to, in my in my short presentation, um, you know when is the right time? Now everybody has to be involved as early as now. Like what I said, it's a ripple effect down the line. If you don't act now, your decisions now or what you do now will always have, and I guarantee this will always have an effect at least four generations down. And that's based on studies that my company has done. Right. So, um, like what the two like what uh, the two previous uh, speakers have said before me and have, are doing with their institutions with Ms. Cree and Mr. Hyman, you know, always be kind. Express kindness, generosity. And because of that, you'll be able to make sure that your artificial intelligence can be used for the better good.